Living your best life is not a dream. It is a reality. The amount of time that you need to translate your dream into that reality is equally proportionate to how badly you want to make it happen. As a dad and as a husband, you owe it to your family to be the best version of yourself because they deserve nothing less than your best. Joining me today is Tony Castillo, a man richly blessed with experiences that taught him valuable lessons, which he hopes to impart on our listeners today. One of the most important lessons he learned is the importance of aligning yourself with your purpose and your vision for your life and how your actions should always coincide with your goals. Find out how he succeeded in overcoming the result of living an unhealthy lifestyle and transformed himself into the brother and son and father and husband that his family could be proud of and happy to be around. Most importantly, realize how life's rejections are simply misdirections leading you to your greatest identity. I'm excited for this episode. My chat with Tony Castillo starts right now. Hello, my friends. Welcome back to another episode of the Dad's Making a Difference podcast. I'm your host, Cam Hall. I am looking forward to diving into our conversation today uh, with my guest, Tony Castillo. Tony is an energetic and inspiring guy, and I know that you will leave this podcast episode and this conversation with a lot of practical takeaways. That is our goal of this podcast. The Dad's Making a Difference podcast is dedicated to helping men become a difference maker in the lives of their families, in their business, and in the community around them. It is my goal that with each episode, we will give you practical and actionable information that you can implement in your life so that you can truly become a dad making a difference. If you are new here, welcome. I encourage you to listen to this interview and then immediately after this interview, go back to episode one where I dive into the pillars of the Dads Making a Difference podcast and our purpose here. Then hit that subscribe button. I'd hate for you to miss out on an episode. And if you're listening to this and this conversation brings you value in any way, please share it with someone you know. Let's pay it forward today. Post it on your social media. Tag us at Dads Making a Difference. You sharing this episode could be the one step that inspires someone else to make a difference in their lives. Now to introduce my guest today. Uh, my guest today is Tony Castillo. Tony is an entrepreneur. He's a business owner, content creator, certified dietitian, loving husband, and new-ish father to a beautiful 18-month-old daughter. Through his business, Nutrition for Performance, Tony and his team focus on helping others improve their performance through individual individualized nutrition strategies. Tony's inspiration to help others understand the role proper nutrition plays in the human body was rooted in his own struggles growing up being considered overweight. Now, I don't want to share too much of Tony's story. So without further delay, Tony, welcome to the Dad's Making Difference podcast. Cam, thank you so much for having me on. And one thing you definitely need to mention is when people listen to this episode, give it five stars, on wherever they listen to it on, whether Absolutely. it's Apple, Spotify, whatever they listen to, give it five stars. Cam is a great guy. He has been a mentor to me. If you're looking for someone to help you become a better leader, make sure not only listen to this podcast, but reach out to Cam because he's a great father as well, great dad, great husband as well, and great entrepreneur as well. So thanks for having me on. I appreciate you, brother. You're kind. And of course, yeah, if you're listening to this and you feel that it does warrant a five-star review, please rate it five stars. It helps us get more reach. It helps more men be exposed to our podcast. We can make a difference in more men's lives. And if you don't think it's worth five stars, hey, direct message me. Seriously, direct message me at Dad's Making a Difference and let us know how we can improve. I'm always open to growth. So Tony, I am, I'm pumped to get into this. Uh, you alluded to it. We know each other a little bit through, you know, a different mentorship opportunity, but I'm excited to have you on today because I know that your story and your mission to help people really dial in their nutrition. I think this is a powerful message. And when we think about a dad making a difference, I truly believe, and you know, for me in my fight, the dad bod business, like 
Nutrition and fitness and, and health is foundational in what we can do in our lives. And without your health, you have nothing. And so why don't you share with us, start by sharing a little bit about you, like where you grew up or little Tony grew up, and then, and then we'll have a conversation about how you got to where you are today. Absolutely. Well, super, again, excited and blessed to be on this podcast with you, Cam. Uh, a little bit about me and how I grew up. Both my parents are from Dominican Republic, so they're both Spanish speakers. And I'm lucky enough that we were just talking about this, your daughter being in class, learning Spanish. Uh, when I was actually in first grade, my teacher pulled my parents aside and said, Tony would never be able to speak English. Um, he just couldn't enunciate words. Um, his, he, and I didn't even know Spanish at the time. I was actually growing up, didn't even speak that much because I was so scared to speak the language because I only heard Spanish at home and English outside that I didn't know what to speak. It was eventually, I felt comfortable with my friends in preschool that I started to, to talk all the time. And then in first grade, when they, my parents pulled me aside and said, well, you know what, Tony, you're going to be going into English classes after school. So I got to get extra English in. Um, so lucky enough to be able to be speaking English, talking with you in this language, grew up in uh, Florida. I had a sister who had Down syndrome. Uh, so I have a very caring background. She really helped me with a lot of things I, I do now with my daughter. Um, one thing, uh, she, my, my sister passed away now six years ago. One thing that she always taught me, she was not able to speak, but she would always smile and she always had to be patient because communication is key when we talk. So one thing I can definitely say that growing up learning and now that I've practiced with my daughter is always smile, and be patient. Uh, but my, my own journey is just growing up, trying to figure out what it's like to be um, a, a Spanish person in the population I was in, how to become a better person, how to better integrate within the community and be able to talk to others. And not only talk to others, but as I decided to grow and go into nutrition my own, how to inspire others. Um, but that's just a little bit about little Tony. Uh, should I go ahead and dive into what got me into my nutrition passion? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll we'll get there. Can I ask you oh, some please. questions about just your intro? And for those of you wondering if, and, and Tony, this is nothing against your sound or where you're at right now, but Tony is currently in Spain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's currently in Spain. So we are, it is so cool to connect with you halfway around the world right now. Yeah. Uh, Tony, you, you said you were growing up and, you know, the language barrier was a first barrier. And then I didn't know that you had a sister who had Down syndrome. And, you know, in my experience, uh, for those guys listening who might know me a bit, if you're new here, I was an educator. I've been in education for 15 years and I spent seven and a half years in education in what we call learning support strategy. So I was the teacher overseeing all the inclusive educational programming for students with disabilities. And so I did that for seven and a half years. So anytime I hear someone who has a family member or community member who's connected to that world in some way, I'm always curious to ask a few questions. Can I, can I ask you a couple? Cam, I knew uh, we were connected, but please, yes. Yeah. <laughs> this just solidified it even more. <laughs> yeah. It, you know, for you, you faced your own barriers, right? The language development, that piece of uh, being able to come out of your shell. And was your sister older or younger than you? Two years older than me. Three years older than you. And I'm sure your sister faced many barriers in, in her own journey. You know, looking at, you know, looking up to your older sister, who had Down syndrome and looking at her and her growth and then you coming up to and facing your own barriers. How did having such an amazing person in your family affect your development? A hundred percent from a, a parental scope of view. My parents said one of the reasons it took me so long to really develop because I was trying to mimic my older sister. Oh. Um, so seeing that she didn't speak, I didn't speak because she still got what she wanted without speaking. So that was one of the first things. So getting into school and getting social was one of the biggest aspects for them. And then seeing that my parents were divorced when I was eight years old, um, being that my father went to Dominican Republic and my mother stayed in the United States, trying to manage and work with my sister to get her across um, on a plane, right? So then I had to figure that out with her. Uh, it definitely affected my own growth in a positive manner. But in the moment, I didn't understand it. Uh, we all went through the teenage years, those awkward years where we don't really know what to do, uh, what we like, who we like, and trying to impress everyone besides our family. It's for, right. for some of us, which was including myself. And I remember I used to be embarrassed. And then eventually when I saw how much my sister cared for me and how much I truly cared for her, I think back to those years and I'd say, wow, I was so blessed to have someone like that 
who really did teach me without ever saying a single word to me um, what is unconditional love and what is true communication without having to use words. And so powerful. Man, I love that. And I'm thinking about the journey that you went through growing up and your family and how it shaped you to who you are today. And more of who you are today to me makes sense. It does. <laughs> because, you know, I think about, uh, we'll, we'll get back to your journey in a second. We can, we'll share. But, you know, the more that you think about how you approach clients, how you approach the people you work with, the people you interact with every day, like I said, you're, you're exciting, you're happy, you're energetic. But I think that came from your growing up in your own development, feeding off of the love and the happiness that was in your family, even though you were going through tough times. It gave you a filter that you put every conversation through. Would you, would you, right. would you say I that? A thousand percent agree. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're starting to see those parallels between your what shaped you to do what you want to do. You know, you grew up, I'm sure at times in your life, you, you and your family, your mom had to feel like you had to advocate for your sister. What was your sister's name? Eileen. Eileen. So you felt like you had to advocate for Eileen at times. And here you are later on in your journey, taking what you learned during that powerful period in your life, advocating for others and advocating for them to do what's right for their families. Uh, and for their physical and mental health. So let's get back to your story. You, I, I didn't no, want to no. interrupt you. <laughs> we can stay I, on there, Cam. Don't worry about it, man. But I, I love that But I feel it's so powerful, hey, your experiences. And I don't want that to be just a blip on the radar in this conversation because there will be somebody listening to this today who's like, I don't have a story. I don't have experiences in my life that have shaped me. I'm looking for purpose. I'm looking for passion. But they're listening to this and like, wait a second. I do have a similar experience in my own life and I can understand that I can be proud of it and that it shaped who I am and that I can celebrate it and share it with other people. So thank you for uh, being a bit vulnerable today. No, thank you for having me on again. And thank you for allowing me to be vulnerable. Yeah, good. So yeah, so you come to the United States. It's you, Eileen and your mom, correct? Anybody else? That's it. That's who, who stayed here. All right. So how do you get from being, you, you were a young immigrant in the United States and single mom, right? For a little bit. And then here you are. So how do you go from that point to now running an uber successful online business where you're helping so many people transform their lives? Yeah. I, you know, one thing we've spoken about in our coaching conversation is what is your why? When my sister was, was here on this earth, I remember saying to myself, she's my wife. Hmm. I know one day oh, I'll have to support her, care for her, and be there for her. But one of the things that my wife and I had a conversation throughout our, our time dating before we got engaged and then eventually married was about having my sister around. Um, and luckily enough, my wife supported that decision. She actually did care for my sister during our time in college a lot. And it really helped me reflect, like, what are my family values and how we got to where we are today? So um, my own family values are family, health, and honesty. Those three things, every time we make a decision, we look on that. And it really did stem off of my sister. And then once my sister passed, it was almost like, did I lose my why? No, it actually made it stronger because I wanted to help people do better. She always motivated me, even though without ever saying a word, how to do better and make the world a better place, even if it's just by having smile, um, always trying to be positive, always being patient because we never know anyone else's story. But when I was 13 years old, um, my mother took me to a urologist and the urologist said, well, you know what? You got something called gynecomastia, AKA man boobs. And it's something I got made fun of. And uh, the doctor said yeah. to me, well, you know, we have two options here. We can either do plastic surgery or we can give you hormone replacement therapy. And at 13 years old, I was like, I don't think either of those things are things that I want to do. At right. This As a 13 um, year old boy. <laughs> I was like, there's gotta be something else. So um, I didn't do anything at that time. Um, I personally went through a lot, a, a, a few bouts of depression. I talked to psychologists, psychiatrists, nothing really ever helped. Um, I got made fun of. And then eventually um, I played uh, American football. I was a lineman, so about 250 pounds. And I was in the band. So think about overweight band geek. All these things got thrown at me during that time. And I didn't like the way I looked. So eventually a friend of mine, he was a bodybuilder. He gave me a bodybuilding plan, a meal plan. I lost the weight. 
Cam, everything was great. Life was right before college. I looked good. I finally felt comfortable in my skin. But then I went to college and I did the exact opposite of that meal plan. I drank all the beer. I forgot what my family values truly were. I forgot what my sister had taught me. I decided to let food take over my life. Um, decided to let partying take over my life. And I was like, I, I, I kind of sat back and I gained all the weight back. And then I tried every diet that was popular at the time, which could have been Atkins, low carb, if it's your macros, clean eating, fat burners, different times of protein supplements. Um, and even uh, my girlfriend, who now is my wife at the time, had a ballerina skinny tea. And I was drinking that behind her back because I said it was for women. I was like, why does it only work for women? Why can't it work for men? Um, oh, wow. Yeah. And uh, I got my degree in biology and chemistry and I took a year off school. And I actually broke my foot because I was so much yo-yo dieting. Uh, I, I broke my foot because I was under fuel. I wasn't giving my body enough nutrients for the amount of activity I was doing, which sometimes it was two a days um, for multiple days a week. Well, she invited me to an open house, my wife, and she said, you know, just look, and there was a degree in nutrition. I was like, wow, you can get a degree in this? I didn't even know you could do that. Uh, to be open and honest with you, Cam. So I sat yeah. for my first class, absolutely loved it. I knew that's exactly where I wanted to be. And there I understood the human body and the metabolism and how foods affect how our body uses it as fuel. From there, I went to do an internship in a hospital down in Miami, but then I went to go work at the University of Florida with athletes. And there's two reasons I love working with athletes. Number one, I want to know what is the secret? Are they taking steroids behind our back? Are they taking a supplement behind our backs? How are they doing it? Because we always see them promoting foods, drinks, things of these natures that we're told right. we can't have, but for some reason they're able to have it. And the other reason is, is because if we can get on a podcast like this, Cam, we can affect one person that can affect yeah. many. I think that's the end of our day trying to make a difference. As you said, dad making the difference, just like what this podcast is. So my goal is to make a difference. If I can affect an athlete or an active individual who can take this message, which could be eat more fruits and vegetables and spread it to millions versus have a soft drink, then we've yeah. made a big, bigger difference. So those are two reasons why I like working with athletes and active individuals. From there, I want to go work with the Toronto Blue Jays uh, in Canada. Yeah. Um, love working with those elite athletes, elite baseball players. And now I currently work in private practice where now I've been really trying to understand my business, how to become a better leader. And thanks to your help, truly tremendously helping me become a better leader, not only in my company, but in my family. Uh, so that's my own journey where I finally found acceptance in my body, in my feeling, because I saw that the top, the top athletes, um, yes, some of them do have eating disorders, but those that excelled and did the best understand Sure that food is fuel and food can really guide on how we function as the best people in our lives because i don't want to be that dad that's talking about food or body image issues not only with my daughter but hopefully a future child um but just with right. others around us i want to be empowering not dismantling I think that's what we do the best right you, you know your journey through middle school high school you know the injury being into college i think so many young men um, whether they are considered by their doctor overweight or not, will navigate some complexities in that period of their life, right? Uh, they'll get to college, they'll dive into the party scene. You know, I was there, man, I was playing, you know, post-secondary sport, playing basketball, and you quickly lose sight of what's important. And you, you mentioned that, like, your why, your filter is a family, health, and honesty, and there was a point in that journey where you looked at it and you're like, I'm not in alignment with this right now. How did you, you know, with the help of your wife and finding a line of study that you were passionate about, personally, how did you flip the switch? How did you go from being a guy who now looking back, you're like, I was in a rut, you know, but the, different, the difference, I was told this last week. The difference between a rut and a grave is the depth. And, uh, and I was like, whoa. And, that, and that's from Ben Kilroy. He's on, I interviewed him last week. And he said, you know, the difference between a rut and a grave is, is the depth. And so there was something that flipped in your, your mind or your heart or something in your life that flipped the switch and you climbed out of that rut before it got too deep. What was it? Damn, I, I would say many things led up to it, but the two that were really sticking in my mind was number one, um, working with athletes and seeing them eat the food and be okay with it and yeah. seeing how many other men struggled with it. Mm. Um, many business coaches I worked in the past said I should only work with women. Uh, they said working with men is one of the toughest population because we don't open up. Right. Um, and I saw that. And yeah. when I finally worked with these elite athletes who were men and women, I finally saw men opening up about food and it was like, wow, they're opening up to me. And I need to be that advocate for them. 
I need to open up myself and have a better relationship with food. Cause if not, I'm doing them a disservice. Right. If I don't have the right um, relationship with it and also not the correct knowledge to help them perform at their best. And the second one was working in professional baseball. Um, what happened was that I was working in professional baseball. As you may know, the baseball season starts in February uh, with spring training, February, March. There are no days off until April 1st. Um, I was waking up early in the morning until late at night. Then from April 1st until October, it's two days off a month. Um, you don't get to choose the days. It could be a Monday of the first week of the month and the Wednesday of the last week of the month, and that's all you get. Then you get an all-star break, and then October comes. If you're lucky, you make the playoffs. If not, you may think it's off-season, but because I'm a dietitian, I'm a staff, we also had a bunch of camps with all the new people we recruited. So October, November, December, January, we still had to show up to the facility and work. I can tell you I love working with those guys, especially because I was lucky enough to even go back to the Dominican Republic and help educate some of these kids who were 16, 15 years old that knew not, they didn't even know how to write rice and beans in their own language. I'm sure no. your daughter can write better than some of these kids that are going to be professional baseball players right. um, in Spanish, not even talking about English, <laughs> in Spanish. Yeah. And they're from the Spanish speaking countries. And when Incredible. I was able to implement some Spanish, um, some, some performance nutrition to them, and they were able to tell me that they understood it, it almost checkmarked that I knew what I was doing, but also I was making the impact I wanted with athletes. But with all the time that was being taken from my work, um, I was having a conversation with one of, one of the mental performance coaches. He asked me, how much is it going to take for you to stop spending time with your family? Mm. Because we see all these CEOs, all these VPs in professional sports that are always infatuated with sports. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's what they love. That's what they love. But I knew I wanted to do something with family. Yeah. And then during that time, my grandfather actually passed away on my mom's side. And I was living about a four hour drive away. And I remember in that moment when he passed, I got a call from my uncle that you need to go see your mom right now. Yeah. Um, I had to drive across the state four hours. Um, I opened the door. My mom immediately was like, what are you doing here? And all of a sudden she burst into tears and she fell. I knew in that moment that family was important to me and that time is ever, ever fleeting. And right. we don't notice that. And then working in a top tier sport, all they care about is a sport. Well, I asked my director at the time if I was able to go to Dominican Republic for my grandfather's funeral, and it was a big N-O. The mm. season was currently on, yeah. and I couldn't miss time. And I was almost in shock. I was like, wow, I can't believe it. So I had to send my mom to the Dominican Republic for her father's funeral by herself. And I was only allowed two days off to go pick her up and bring her back and get right back to work. And I knew in that moment, my time was not being valued. My family life was not being valued. And I knew if I wanted to create a family, which there are a lot of families in baseball, I'm not denying that. Yeah. But the family I wanted to create was not within that world. Um, I have even heard stories of baseball players who have kids and they aren't allowed to go see their wife give birth because they're in the middle of the season. And that, to me, are the things that don't matter to me. The right. things that matter to me are family and I want to be there for those moments to support them. So that was the other switch that helped me see I needed to do something to help better help people and help my family, but it had to be a balance with the values I had. Yeah. And so you made the decision to walk away from that, to walk away from that profession. You know, that's a tough decision and I'm sure it wasn't easy for you, but professionally guys would be like, man, he, he was, that was the dream, like major league baseball. He's a dietitian. He's working with these guys who are high level athletes but behind the scenes, you know, you go back to your filter, you know, family, you, you wanted to prioritize that. That is the first piece of your filter if it was to run through it. And when you saw that that wasn't in alignment, you decided to make a change that was hard, um, that made you probably uncomfortable for a little bit. And you had some big conversations with you and your wife, you know, I just, I think about your story here and I want you to elaborate a little bit more on how you felt as a, as a husband at that time, like what risks you were taking for your family, because there's guys right now listening who, you know, their life is being dictated by somebody else where they're either feeling like they need to climb the ladder, get to where everybody else says they need to be. Or maybe they're young and they're being told you need to graduate, marry the girl, buy the house, have the kid, get the job. Here you go. Not necessarily in that order, but this is what the pathway is for you. And we buy in. 
because we, we feel that it's right. You were put in a spot where you had an opportunity to continue working with a high level industry, but you're like, no, this isn't, this isn't an alignment with my passion and my purpose. It's not in alignment with my filter. What, how was that navigated in your household? How was that decision that, you know, for you to walk away? How did you navigate that as a husband at that time? So what happened was a few things kind of were put to alignment. As I was finishing up on my last season with the Blue Jays, I remember talking to my director and telling her, you know, I, I'll stay for another season as long as I get a contract for two years. And sports, you only get yearly contracts. Mm. So if I get a two-year contract and I'm promised to be stayed um, in the Tampa area so I could at least spend mornings with my wife. Right. And she said, sure, sure, sure. That sounds good. I said, okay. So I was waiting for the contract. I got the contract. It was a one-year contract. Mm. And I said, no, I'm not going to accept it. She's like, are you sure? I'm like, yeah. So then her director called me. And he asked me, Tony, are you sure you want to do this? And he went over five things that always stick into my head. Is it because we're not paying you enough? Is it because you're not getting enough time off? Is it because you're not feeling heard? Is it because you're not feeling supported? Is it because you feel like your team isn't developing? And I said, I haven't even said a word to you why I'm not signing my contract, but you've given me five reasons why I shouldn't resign. Hmm. I've already asked for a two-year contract and you've given me all the reasons why. I agree. I love my job. I love the impact I'm making, but everything you've just stated already tells me that I shouldn't take this job because if you're not going to listen to my two-year contract agreement and that I will be and written in paper that I will be giving a promotion because I know that I'm the only person in baseball besides my director that's a dietitian working in this realm. As of now, there's a lot more. When I was there, yeah. there was only a handful of other dietitians and professional baseball working in the, the level we were. Wow. And I said, promote me to a minor league coordinator. I wasn't asking to be director. I was trying to take my boss's job, but I wanted to get a little bit, you know, I've been here a few years. I feel like I, this is the place I need to be at. And he said, absolutely. And I said, oh, okay. So I thought I was going to stay, Cam. But yeah. then my director said, no, no, call him back. That's not true. And I was almost like, why are we playing this game with phone tech? Right. So I called the director back, my director's director. And he said, oh, actually, no, we can't offer that. It's a one-year contract. Take it or leave. And I said, goodbye. Um, and I did talk it over with my wife. And my wife said, what do you want to do? What's going to make you happy? What are our values? And I think at that point is where we decided to make our values. What's important to us? And I knew in that moment, it was not to stay in professional baseball. It was scary. Um, I, I think I've told you one of my first business coaches I hired as a dietitian, I said, you could literally tell me to wear a sign outside the street and to, and to say, hire me as a dietitian. I'll do it. Just tell me what strategies I need to implement in order to make this work. I was desperate to make it work because I knew that this was all I was going to do for the rest of my life. And I was going to love it because I knew I was going to be doing it on my terms and teaching people what I love and give them my passion and my energy through nutrition. So I think it was a conversation I definitely not only had with the people I was working with, but with my wife. And my wife supported me 100% because she could see my passion. She yeah. knew that this was important to me. It was a scary step for, step for both of us. Um, we did have some money in savings. And of yeah. course, we used it. But now we are doing better than ever. And as you said, I'm currently in Spain. I've been here for three months. And uh, not three months yet, almost there. Um, we'll be back before that mark. But loving every minute of it and being able to spend time as a family, which is what some people dream of. And I would not have been able to do it if I had still been working in baseball. Yeah, amazing. And you know... That whole time, I think the powerful piece is it always comes back to that filter. You know, we need to have boundaries in our lives, whether those boundaries keep us from walking off a cliff, you know, metaphorically mm -hmm. or not, <laughs> you know, Absolutely. walking off a cliff in our career or in our family, or whether those boundaries are simply to slow us down so we can wait for a moment and say, what is my filter? Why am I doing this? is it in alignment with where I'm at? And so you, you stuck to that. And I, I admire that because a lot of guys will say, I have this mission and I have this vision. And I have this yeah filter. Like I work with guys on setting their filter all the time. And yet it's just a slogan they put on the wall and it's not actually put into action and you put yours into action. You know, as you grow now, and now you're a dad, you know, your daughter's 18 months old. As you grow, um, you, your family, professionally, how do you aspire to make a difference 
in the lives of your family and in your business and in your community? I always go back. Um, I was asked before, like, who's my superhero? Mm. And they gave me an opportunity to say any of the Marvel characters or DC. And that's what they were asking me to give. And I said, no, my superhero is my dad. Um, so I would aspire to be like him. Someone who's respectful. Mm -hmm. Someone that follows what's, I don't want to say follow what's given to him, but he, he follows the research in a sense. So he helps guide on those basics in life and also to provide. Um, so what I want to leave behind or make a difference with my family is making sure that we are respectful to everyone um, and make sure we follow in line with our values, with the family, health, and honesty. So what I want to make not only in my business, not only in my community, but in my family is that we follow those things. So if we have a decision, does it, how does it affect our family? How does it affect our health? And how honest are we being with each other if we are doing this the right way? Because one of the toughest things I've seen many of my clients, even in my family, is just honesty. Reason mm -hmm. being is we don't want to hurt someone else's feeling. We feel like if we're going to be honest with them, that's when we can hurt their feelings. But one thing I see with my dad, not that he doesn't care about other people's feelings, but he's honest. And sometimes it hurts people, whether it's myself, whether it's my wife, whether it could be my daughter, but at least he's honest. Um, maybe there's better ways to go about it and communicate it. I'm absolutely sure of that. But that's what I want to build in my community, in my business, in my family, being able to follow those values of are we helping keep our family together? Are we helping keep our family a family? Are we helping each other be healthy, whether it's physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally? Mm -hmm. And then finally, are we being honest with what we're saying? Yeah, I love it. You know, it's interesting when you led into your conversation about your background and you say, you know, your parents divorced when you were eight. A lot of people would jump to the conclusion that your dad wouldn't be somebody that you yes. looked up to. You know, like you, you were living with your mom and Eileen and your dad went back to the Dominican Republic. And here we circle back into your story where your superhero is your dad because he was still able to do those things. I love it because there are a lot of guys out there who get, you know, people go through a lot of tough experiences in their life and families will separate or families will blend and things will happen. But it, a lot of guys won't use it as an excuse to step away, to be disconnected. And it sounds like your father, even though he and your mom are no longer together, was still a big part in your life. Absolutely. He found a way to provide for us, even if it wasn't a different country. Um, and I'd still consider my mom a superhero as well. Yeah. Um, I learned something different from her. She's very altruistic. She wants to help others. And I got that from her, honestly, even though my dad's a doctor, he, he helps other in his ways. But my mom um, was also in the education realm, but she was uh, helping kids with disabilities. And that's what she did for most of her life once my father and her separated. So it's not only helping my sister, but helping others that have that challenge. And almost being a help with other parents that have that challenge as well. So I think that's a lot of it where it stems from with my family and health and honesty. Like she had me honest with those parents, like, Hey, you know, something's wrong with your kid because she would take care of some kids and they'd come in and they wouldn't be clean. And she had to tell them like, you need to clean your kid. Yeah. You need to take care of this. This is yours. Like you need to love this person. Like don't neglect them just because they can't speak to you. So I think it's almost being an advocate for others when they can't be an advocate. Sometimes when it comes to health, we don't see that because right. we think of so many others that we're the last person we think of. And as you said, health is everything. Yeah. This podcast. Okay. So now let's, let's transition back into the health. Cause I, I, I feel like we were missing a big chunk. If you know, I didn't give you an opportunity to share what you teach, how you help people and you've shared what's gotten you here and it, makes your story even that much more powerful and so if somebody's coming into your world say there's a dad out there who's struggling and or a family or a mom or whoever it might be and they're struggling with their health you know what does tony and his team do to help them first thing hydrate or dehydrate i love it i <laughs> remind was, them <laughs> i was hoping you would say that because you this is on all your stuff so explain Absolutely. hydrate or dehydrate uh, so this was a few years ago when I first started my business. I went to have brunch with some friends in Texas, and uh, we all had a good time at the wedding. We went to go have brunch the next day, and the waitress comes to us. Ooh, you guys look like you had a rough night. Uh, hydrate or dehydrate, right? And I was like, wow, that's such a great thing uh, to say. I've never heard that, and I've started to utilize it 
and everything I teach because not only is it after a, a rough night of drinking, but I noticed that many people when we are with our families, we may not be in the best of moods because sometimes we work all day. Many of the people I work with, not only athletes, but those active individuals that they work out really hard in the morning, then they just forget about everything nutrition wise the rest of the day and they don't get the results they want. One of the first things I ask them is how much water do you drink? Oh, I drink enough. Or I drink 12 Diet Cokes a day. It's always those two. It's never in between. Uh, <laughs> it is, isn't it? It's like, yeah. it's, it's the, well, I had like two cups this morning. Wait, does my smoothie count if I put water in it? Yeah. Or it's the, I had two cases of Diet Coke. Yeah. <laughs> so what I've noticed is that they have symptoms of dehydration. So they dehydrate. They have the headache. They have the fatigue. They have the nausea and research shows that if you're two to 3% dehydrated, that affects your performance by seven to 10%. Wow. So what I tell people is if you think about your whole day and if you had to decide something that was 10% less of your best or hundred percent of your best, which one are you given hundred percent? Every time the people I work with, anyone that says that probably not the right fit for me, uh, <laughs> but they say hundred percent. And I'm like, so you're going through your whole day dehydrated and then you show up at home after working and you're giving 90% of your best. Is that really what you want to do for your family? And they say most of the time, no. So that's why we work on hydration. It's one of the, the first foundational things we teach about hydration because it's just something we always tend to forget. And we always tend to lean on those energy drinks or sodas or coffees, yeah. uh, or we just tend to forget about it because we don't know how important it is. Or we tend to think we can't have that much water. It's going to make me run to the bathroom all day and I can't work. Versus like, how much is it going to really help you focus Right. on doing the things that are right for you. So hydrate or dehydrate, one of the first things we go over. Yeah, I love it. You know, in in fact, the dabod, we did the same thing. It was like, get your water and take up first. And we got that. I'll go to the washroom all the time. I'm like, yeah, but how, <laughs> effect, how effective are you in between? Right. And actually, much more. now that you say it, you know, much more effective. So no, it's cool. And so hydrate or dehydrate, you know, that's your your slogan, you can see that on all your social media stuff. You say that often because of the importance of hydration. And now right. you mentioned already, you know, briefly mentioned, you know, food as fuel. And I'm a firm believer in food as fuel. So tell us a little bit about, you know, your vision um, or your stance on food as fuel as it comes to performance. Absolutely. So one of the things I always heard growing up is that carbs are bad. And I went through all these bouts of if I wanted to lose weight, if I want to perform better, how to do low carb. And I was like, oh my God, this must be the way. But then I worked with athletes and if anything is they eat the opposite of that. They eat as many carbs as possible because that's the energy they get. Now, the things that we teach are the difference between the types of fuel sources. So for example, one thing we teach our athletes and active individuals we work with is, all right, if I have a Lamborghini, we're going to put that premium fuel. But the regular fuel, Lamborghini is not going to work as well. Now, nothing wrong with the Toyota Corolla. I used to drive one, but we don't put the, the premium fuel in it. We typically put the regular fuel. But if we do put that premium fuel in, we know it's going to run better. And I asked the mechanic yeah. this because I know not very much about cars. <laughs> I, I asked the mechanic once, I was like, hey, uh, this is something I teach my clients. Like, I don't know much about cars. Is this actually true? And the mechanic was like, absolutely. And I was like, thank yeah. you. Um, so I'm not lying about it. If you put premium yeah. gas in a Corolla, it'll get a little bit more mouth gone. So we teach our clients that it's okay to have carbs but we also teach them to have a balanced plate and we want mm. them to hit their goals, but also maintain it long-term. So we teach them the plate method because many people go into macro counting. There's nothing wrong with that. Many people go into calorie counting. There's nothing wrong with that. It's really understanding where that client is at and having them achieve their goals. Because what happens is I always ask my clients, do you find yourself calorie counting in five, 10 years? Most of the time they answer, no, they mm. want to be happy, be able to eat pizza, be able to eat donuts maybe have that weekend beer, especially with summer coming, people want to sit outside and enjoy yeah. a cocktail or two or have a glass of wine, but they also want to perform their best throughout the week and not let the weekends ruin all the progress they made. So we teach them how to balance that plate so they can be their best performance, not only in the gym, not only at work, but with their families and not have to have separate meals from their families. Because so many people come to me where they've done a said diet, they've done a said plan that they got from, let's say, a personal trainer where they had to change everything they ate and now they have to eat different from their wife. They have to eat different from their kids. And it's like, what are you teaching them? In all honesty, yeah. right? Yeah. You're speaking my language, brother. I, <laughs> you know, you know, we are in alignment with this. Uh, we're, we're in alignment with the importance of being able to eat with your family at the same times and the same foods and being able to live your lifestyle. And 
like you said, you, people want to be able to live their life and know that they're still fueling their body properly in a way that they can perform at their best. Whether performing at your best means you yeah. are playing on the major league field or performing at your best means you are crawling around the floor chasing your 18-month-old daughter, right? <laughs> right? Per- Absolutely. Performance is performance. That's amazing. Yep. So, so Tony, people who are listening to this, man, you've given so much value. Hey, you, you just so much value in this conversation. Where can people find you? Absolutely. So you can find me at coach underscore Tony T O N Y Castillo C A S T I L L O on Instagram. You can find me at my website, nutritionfp.com. You could email me Tony at nutritionfp.com. Um, you can also find me if you, you have any questions, you can reach out to Cam, working with him. He's a great guy. Uh, so any of those ways is how you can find me. And of course, we'll put all Tony's contact information in our show notes. And to get those show notes, you can go to dmdpodcast.com or just look down below this episode. Tony, you know, I it's too bad we're out of time. You know, I'm going to have to have you. I'm going to have you back sometime. Thank you so much for you know, opening up today, telling us a little bit about your story, sharing with me a little bit about your, you know, growing up and your sister. And I think that's so powerful in your journey. So thank you, brother. I appreciate you. Uh, and when, when you heading back stateside? Next week, actually. So I'll be back soon. Okay. Well, safe travels to you and your family. And once again, thank you so much for joining us today on the Dads Making a Difference podcast. Thanks, Cam. Thanks for having me on. See you, brother. Thank you.